Okay, I was asked a great question about um, God's will and reading the signs and, uh, and the difference between ego and getting God's guidance. Um, so as you do, as you do uh, spiritual work, whether, whether it's the Course in Miracles, whether it's uh, you know, being a spiritual teacher like Muji and being in the Observer, or if you're doing Hawkins' work and just uh, uh, just letting go of the dualities of transcending the levels of consciousness, then it, when you're you know like when you're at a low level of consciousness, uh, you know I used to be in a low, very low level of consciousness wrapped in addiction, so that means that the ego is very very loud, and there's a feeling of great self-centeredness. <clears throat> when you do spiritual work, especially uh, enlightenment work, you realize that the ego creates the limited self, the self-centered self or the personal self. So that is, why does that happen? That's due to identification. If there's a lot of interest or identification with thoughts in the body, then it's like you feel this contracted, separated sense of self. Uh, and that gets projected, so you live in a world of separation where you feel you're trapped in, the body, in your body and thoughts and you think everyone else is. So that's, that would be like being in pure ego. So every, every thought, <coughs> thought of the ego is acted upon. So that would be, you know, in 12 steps they call that self-will. Uh, as you start to do sp <coughs> spiritual work, like in 12 steps they say, we start to pray and meditate for knowledge of God's will. Uh, or we try to get, the, you know, we try to get that intuitive, uh, intuitive uh, guidance which is beyond the level of the ego. Uh, one of the things I think which is really, really great for, um, uh, it depends what level of consciousness the person's listening at. Like if they're at a low level of consciousness, then you could do things like prayer and meditation. Pray in the situation with the, my, my job. I pray for knowledge of God's will and the power carried carry out. Or if you're doing the Course in Miracles, uh, I pray for a miracle and shift in my perception to see this work situation differently. Or um, if there's heavy beliefs of fear, like poverty or something, like another one that we do, which is related to Lesson 14 of Course in Miracles. Like, I cancel my belief in poverty consciousness. I'm an infinite being. Or I cancel my belief in lack consciousness, I'm an infinite being. So you can do those, and they start to clear the, the ego. Now, uh, you can, uh, you know, like the Course in Miracles has a phenomenal thing. I'm not, I'm not a body. I'm free, for I am as God created me. So that lets go of the identification with the body as the source of self. So you get to a more limited experiencing. Uh, if you're doing uh, the other thing, I think which is great for letting go of the ego's field of thinkingness, like. Look, when I was in my active ego, it was like there was like a lot of interest and attention to my thoughts. And it was like I had this loud head that was, and all this energy and attention was going, it was thinking all the time, what's to do in the future, what's to do in the past, it was this thing. When you do like the uh, self-inquiry work, which is going to, being the witnesser, the detached witnesser and the observer of thoughts, so suddenly is a spiritual awakening to realize that there is a witnesser or a detached observing of thoughts which is not interested in the field of thoughts. This opens up a spiritual space uh, that and it starts to let go of that habitual identification with thoughts as being the locus of self. So you start being aware of this spaciousness, this, uh, this witnessing field which is detached from all the thoughts. And this opens up the doorway to being in the field of God consciousness, or being in the, uh, some call it God consciousness, non-duality, enlightenment. Now when that happens, everything is happening spontaneously, intuitively. Everything, it's like, I love the prayer of St. Francis, one becomes a channel of God's will, one becomes an instrument, one becomes a vessel of the divine. It's like the ego is cut out of the picture. This thing that's saying, I need to do this in the future, I need to be there, and the, I'm, I'm, I feel bad about what I did in the past, it's all gone. And there's just presence, and there's a natural orchestration out of that intuitiveness, which is not coming from the field of ego. So, 
to answer the question, how do you know? When you start to do this spiritual work, you'll start to become more, you'll get the differentials in each individual will be different of when you're in this, what I call the God conscious field. When you're in the, inter, where, you know, when you're in the eternal now, you're in presence. You're not in your thinking. You're not in the future past trying to work things out, trying to analyze or judge this moment. You're out of that totally. There's just presence. And there's a natural spontaneity and intuitiveness that of natural orchestration from the universe. It's just like if you had a baby, they're not thinking. They're just naturally, intuitively just being orchestrated by the divine field. And that's what happens when you start to let go. So you'll start to do, but you know, like if you're in, um, like let's say you're in your ego and you want an answer to something like related to work or related to relationships. If you're in the ego field, you need to like, you can go to the observer or just start doing the course of all my thoughts are meaningless, the course of miracles, pray for a miracle to see it differently. If you're in 12 steps, you can do inventory and pray to have defects removed. But as you do that, it's like a deeper intuition, a deeper hunch, which is not from your head. The thing with the intuition is it, intuition, this is the thing, when you start to connect to intuition, you're connecting to a field of omnipresence and omnipotence, omniscience which has nothing to do with your ego. The sixth sense, the hunch, the intuitive feeling, has got nothing to do with what your ego understands and has learned through this world. It's like, you get an intu I'll give you an example. Like, when a, a long time ago I was working door-to-door um, -door charity sales, you know, like direct debits for, uh, I was doing World Vision. So knock on the door, uh, go down the street, knock on the door, uh, we, you know, there are starving children, like, would you like to adopt a child in Africa, we'll send you photos, just sign up for like, you know, so it's a bit like that, and, um, but what happened was, because I was doing a lot of spiritual work at the time, like, s streets would light up, this is true, like, I'd look at all these streets, and one of them would light up, and I'd go down that street, and immediately someone would like say, yes, do that and then I'd look and then another street would light up and I'd go it's like it's like the path was lighted you know and, and these can happen indifferently like you might get a hunch intuitively oh I should go there today you know or I need to avoid that place it doesn't come from your head this is a deeper a deeper field of, uh, of recognition so you do so you do those things <clears throat> and eventually what's happening is you're relying on the non-linear, the limitless field, the witnessing field, the non-local field to orchestrate life. And it becomes more and more not about the head, getting instructions from the head, you see. So it's like actually you could say that, yes, you know, it's like you're in the field and if the head's needed, it can just quickly activate for a little thing and then it's gone. But, you know, most people are in their ego. So the ego is in control of the whole day, and there's, you know, they might get, if they meditate, you might get like two minutes in the field. But as you start to want to be in the field all the day, you devote to being in the field all the day, then you get this sense of presence, or, wit or the witnessing field, and that becomes who you are. And everything that comes from the witnessing field is, you know, it's coming from the spirit, it's coming from the oneness of the universe orchestrating and unfolding in unity, with, in harmony with the whole. When you're in separation, when you're in the ego, you're in the limited self, which is just trying to get its own limited view of things orchestrated for itself. So it's going to be like, well, I need more money, I need a mate, you know, I need it's all, of this, it's all this fear based limited thinking. So as you start to go into these more universal fields of oneness, or, or limitless presence, then, you know, there, there's a, you could say, like, being in the ego is it's very narrow, limited view. You're not aware of others and how, and, the, you know, it's a low level of consciousness. So, those are the things. Another thing to do, if people are at low levels, if you've got a lot of feelings coming up, a lot of fear or guilt or shame coming up, what you can do to clear, and a lot of, thought identification. If there's a lot of feelings coming up, uh, I've got lots of videos on YouTube, feel the feelings. 
which is let go of labelling and going to your head to make a story about the feelings, just allow the feelings to be experienced without any kind of labelling or thought activity. You go through it and then at the other end you'll, be, you'll, you'll get that direction from grace. But while you're in the feelings you need to process that through. If you're like identified with a lot of fear and guilt and shame and darkness, you're, you're, not, you're, not, you're not got a clear line to the intuition. So you need to like process that through, pray, and then the answer will be revealed on the other side. A quick way to do it, or you can do the observer. So if you're, the observer can quickly collapse. Uh, if you're not sure what you should do to make a decision, because, okay, so let's say I'm uncertain what to do. Should I take this job A or job B? Well, what's uncertain? So there's a feeling of uncertainty and there's confusion at the level of the ego. But, you know, the thoughts are being observed and the confusion is being observed. So let's say, okay, I'm not, my ego is saying I, I'm not sure whether to do job A or job B and there's a feeling of confusion, I don't know what to do. Well, first of all, that means the ego is trying to work it out and there's, there's a feeling associated with it. So you're in the field of the ego while you're, in the field, while you're identified, interested in the field of the thoughts and the emotions, you're not going to get a link to the divine. So you can go, like, what's observing the thoughts and what's observing the confusion, and then just be in that field. If the observer is interested in what's going on, then go to the, uh, the observer of the interested field, and then suddenly it's gone. It's not, it's not important. And then something will come. It's like, it's not important whatever happens, but that's, that's the way that it, grace wants to go. It wants to go with grace speed. It's not a big thing, but just go with B. Because that's like all the attachment, all the fear, all the need to work it out is gone. So there's something deeper now which will orchestrate intuitively. I'm doing that. And that's it. Just go with that. It's, you don't need the head to work it out, you see. And that is, the, that is the infinite field, the omniscience field. There's a field of intelligence that knows everything that everybody's thinking, everything that every, everything is, and will work in the, in the interest of the highest good of all, and will direct you because you've released the ego as your orchestrator of what you need to be doing with your life. You've, you're now in the field of the infinite. So that was... Um,